Hello, this is Chris Brett from Eurogamer. You're looking at Torment Ties of Numenera, and I'm joined by two people that know about this video game. Uh, Colin McComb, the lead, the creative lead, is that right? Uh, creative lead. And Brian Fargo, just all-round games industry legend. I think that's that's the title at this stage. I'll, I'll, it's what my it's what my card says. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, what are we looking at here? This is um, so like a, a new area that players won't have already seen from the early access build, right? Right, this is, uh, this is the area immediately following that. You, we've jumped onto an airship to the Valley of Dead Heroes, which is essentially a millions of year old burial ground used by countless civilizations to inter their dead. Uh, cenotaphs, memorials, sepulchers line the area as far as the eye can see, hundreds of kilometers. Uh, memorialists come here to study this place, to figure out their place in the world, but unfortunately they're being stalked by murderous cultists. There's who, always a group of murderous cultists. Always a group of murderous cultists. Very frustrating. Uh, but these guys, these guys believe that the flesh is a cage and they are here to free to people right, from their okay. cage. That's an interesting justification. Um, so yeah, for people that don't know um, the setup to Torment, this is uh, set a billion years from now, is that is that right? Correct. It's at least a billion, right? Or is it a billion or at least, at least a billion? At least a billion. We don't have full visibility, but this is the ninth world. Mm -hmm. So we know for sure there were eight civilizations, uh, advanced civilizations, that came and went before this one. Now, there could be a lot more than that, but we know there's at least nine. Sure, and like the humanity has now kind of re-emerged and is sort of freaking out about the fact that, for example, you live in a world in which you can encounter the Moor. Correct. Uh, what is the maw? It looks like a giant wall with a big mouth. Oh, this the maw is actually just the a small part of the bloom, which is a gigantic interdimensional slug beast that reaches through time and space. That you're about to stab with a transdimensional scalpel. These are all excellent which is never words. a good idea. Yeah. It's never a good idea. You so rarely get to use the words transdimensional scalpel. That, that's true. <laughs> you don't get to say it enough. I right? Find. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, the, the, as you'd imagine with, with a, a game like this from the studio, it, it's, you know, this, this is a game dictated by player choice, right? You, every dialogue option, there's, there's uh, a whole number of different ways you could approach them all here. Like, stabbing it with a transdimensional scalpel isn't your only option, right? Correct. Uh, we know that this maw feeds on guilt, so right. that we, we could feed a guilty thing to it. One of our companions feels guilty about letting his village be destroyed, there's a high-speed train nearby that feels guilty about letting its passengers die. Right. So what, what would happen if you did that? It, it, it's, or is that to be discovered? Uh, that's to be discovered. Because, man, feeding one of your own companions to the flesh-eating wall, it feels like a pretty big step. It, uh, is, it is a bit of a stab in the back, and he will react to you accordingly. He is not fond of having his memories essentially ripped from him mm -hmm. because he is... He defines himself by his guilt and the invasion of his mind by this horrific interdimensional entity is, well, it's a violation. So the more, uh, as it's part of um, the Bloom, as, uh, as far as I understand, has now opened a gateway to a different group of people. Uh, before we were like, it was like a sort of mutant um, civilization in like a fleshy world with like goop and bones all over the place. This isn't that. This is like Star Trek. No, yeah. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is sort of a Gilded Age uh, spaceship, a forgotten space station where these people have been marooned for hundreds of generations, uh, and they believe that a ship is coming to take them home, and we have come to steal their stuff. How long have they been waiting for the, the ship to come and pick them up? Uh, hundreds of generations, yeah. They've built an entire religion based around the faith that the ship is coming, despite the fact that there is no sign of their rescue. Man, these are some pretty dramatic uh, situations that you've introduced here. These are the more normal scenes. <laughs> there was a trans-dimensional giant slug. <laughs> that, that was that's that. Uh, that's not. We haven't that's got like to the We haven't got to the strange stuff. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, and yeah. So, from players that have seen the early access version, what is new here? Actually, one thing that I should bloody well point out is that this is from the Xbox One uh, version, hence the slightly uh, different UI that people are seeing. Uh, yeah, these games come to consoles, this is what that looks like. Correct. Uh, I am, well, this is what it's going to look like on PC as well. Right. Uh, the, the only thing that has changed here is the UI. Um, we, we based this off of our experience with, uh, with Wasteland 2, um, but 
Our brief has always been to deliver a PC, Mac, and Linux game. And so that was what we were doing. We have, we have stripped out no content. We have stripped out no polish. This is exactly the same experience, just with a different UI. Is that feasible then to, to, to take, you know, such a, well, looks to be quite a complicated RPG and make it work on the consoles with a different control scheme. Well, I, I think we did it successfully with Wasteland 2. I mean, in, in Wasteland 2, nobody questioned it because we ported it, right? So they knew it was exactly the same content. This is really the same thing. We've just made the timeline be simultaneous. So, but the question is, yeah, I mean, people, they, they, they did like the experience. It was, it was well uh, received by the people doing it. You know, the, the ra in fact, the, the radial interface, which is more console-ish, People, we actually made it available on PC if you wanted to use it. And sure enough, even some of the PC players chose the radial interface over the uh, over the mouse-driven one. So that's an encouraging sign. Yeah. So believe it or not, yeah, no, it works. How, how have you found with, with Torment? Um, we mentioned it's on early access, the kind of the first act of the game, I guess. Uh, you, that's how you describe it. Um, like, you the game's not out yet, but already you're seeing feedback from uh, fans, and also to an extent, like reviews from fans. If you look on Steam. People are leaving in their like large numbers user reviews. Is that is that a uh, strange concept for you guys to, to have already kind of uh, sent something out and, and getting that immediate reaction? We have actually integrated uh, some of the fan feedback into the game. Like for instance, we knew that there were tr there was trouble at the beginning of the game. It was a little info dumpy and it was slow and it was too much text. Okay. And uh, the fans said, you know, we need to fix this up. It's, uh, it's boring and slow and it ruins the pace. And we said, yes, thank you. And so we took that as an opportunity to recraft the beginning of the game altogether. And now it's a tighter, more polished experience. Yeah, no, I, we, it, one, one of the things when you're in production with these, one is you get very close to the product. So sometimes it's hard to always feel it objectively like a stranger would. And then the other part is we're looking at a lot of things all the time. And so something will kind of like bother us a little bit. And, 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 and you'll, you, you'll sometimes discount it for a second because there's so much content you're going sure. through. But then as soon as you go live and the users, to the point that Colin just said, say, this thing that starts off way too slow, you're gonna be getting way too, too much information in a short period of time, ease us into this thing. In my gut, I knew, right when they said they, they're right, you know, yeah. and, and I kind of knew it, but I needed the reminder, we needed the reminder. And so that, that I think I, I have so much, great use out of early access. I love it. I, I mean, to me, to not have it scares the hell out of me. Like, to go blind and ship a title without having thousands of people bang on it first, sure. I, I would not want to do it. Fair enough. Uh, one of the things I enjoyed during the presentation was that you, you mentioned that the early access version, which has had um, an awful lot of positive feedback, like, to you guys, it's also like a really old version of the game now, right? Like, uh, it has some bugs that you want to uh, fix. So, you know, it's, it's a version from um, you know, before you got to this stage, before you... Yeah, and it's it's nine months old at this point. It's, right. uh, you know, people are playing something that to us is ancient history. <laughs> um, and we, we have, the game is content complete right now. We're doing localization and polish and bug fixing. Uh, and I mean, we are not writing anything more. We're not adding any more content. Right, okay. We're just trying to make this game the best, best playable experience our players can have. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, it's coming at the start of next year at some point, Q1-ish. Yeah. Ish. No, we well, I mean, yeah, definitely yeah, yeah, Q1. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. It, it's only weeks that we're trying to figure out exactly where it's going to be, but we're, we're, we're right there. We're, we're, I mean, these guys are starting, to, they're pretty much wrapping up their writing. We're just localizing and bug fixing. Oh, it's, it's, we're not just wrapping up our writing. We are, we are wrapped. We are wrapped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, okay. Daily yeah. will kill us if we yeah. write anything more that is not yeah. essential to this game. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, thank you so much for your time, guys, and it was great to see a little bit more of the game. All right, well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate the support. Yeah. Thanks.